What is going on guys? Money Webby here back again with the fantasy football video. First one of the season. Got a preview for my favorite player currently and fantasy football drafts. Obviously it's a little bit early, but I wanted to get this out there to put him ingrained in your minds when it comes around the time for you to have your own fantasy football draft. So this guy, Albert Wilson, as you can see here, um, just going way too late. The upside on him where he's being currently drafted is way too big. The opportunity in this Dolphins offense and a team that's going to be really bad, coming from behind a lot. They're going to be tanking, so there's going to be a lot of passing um, down opportunities in this offense. So I'm going to break down for you exactly why I'm on this guy a little bit further. And um, yeah, so if you can show some love to the like button before we get going, this is my first uh, video for the fantasy football season. Um, so want to get this out here, get as many eyes on po eyes on this as possible. Really goes a long way. So if you can do that for me, that'd be great. And uh, let's hop right into it though. So first thing up, why I love this guy. Um, showed a great ability last year in 2018. Only played six games, I believe, but he was just going off and um, limited opportunity. I mean, he wasn't a full snap guy until around like week three or so when Danny Amendola um, got a little bit banged up and he was just playing so well um, that the Dolphins just had to put him out there on the field a little bit more often. Started to get closer to 90% of the snaps right before he got hurt. But in this limited opportunity, he had 13.8 fantasy points per game. This is going to be PPR scoring um, I'm talking about. That was 26th among wide receivers. So like I said, not a full snap guy. Um, wasn't even getting that many targets. He was just very efficient with the work just because he's an underrated uh, really good player based on the numbers that we saw over the last few years a super efficient even on the Chiefs in 2017 was really doing some great stuff with the Alex Smith quarterback who isn't that great so like even with bad quarterback play um, with Ryan Tannehill and um, with uh, Alex Smith as well as some below average quarterback play he's still able to put up some big numbers and he did uh, this one off against probably the best defense of last year, the Chicago Bears, pretty much willed a victory over them um, with six catches, 155 yards, two touchdowns, as you see there. Absolutely torched them. Um, he, he actually was graded out very well on Pro Football Focus, too, which um, looks at every snap. They break down and grade players based on their ability, and he was an underrated guy based on the, number, the names you see on the top of that list, like among guys like Julio Jones up there, Mike Evans. He was actually tied with Julian Edelman at, at the 14th best wide receiver. So that kind of shows um, how highly pro football focus graded them out with his ability. And uh, he has the speed to go along with. Obviously, speed is a big part of playing wide receiver. And he clocked the fourth fastest wide receiver time at 21.74 miles per hour up, up there with guys like Tyree Kill, Dalvin Cook, those speedy players. Um, so really good ability. Um, showed that off last year, but obviously the hip injury derailed him a little bit, but a little bit more on the stuff he was able to do. Yards per route run, that's the biggest. I also want to mention his yards after catch, which has made him such a phenom last year. Um, he was number one among wide receivers with over 20 catches. He had 13.2 yak per reception. So whenever he got a catch, um, on average, he was getting 13.2 yards after catch. Uh, obviously, that's not really sustainable over a full season, but I think the opportunity is going to go up, like I mentioned before. Limited snaps, li kind of limited targets early on. He was just super efficient, um, but in this offense, I think he's going to get some more opportunities just based on the players around him and the game script and stuff like that. But yards per route run, this is one of the best predictor metrics you can look at if you're trying to predict out uh, the stats of the player the following year. You can look at yards per route run. Albert Wilson was number one in the NFL among wide receivers last year and yards per route run. So th that just kind of shows his ability. That's not a fluke for a guy to be able to do that among these kind of names. Like if you look at the yards per route run, this is a pro football focused stat, but if you look at the recent years, it's always elite players at the top. If you look at the names that's around here, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, T.Y. Ty Ty Hilton, um, Tyreek Hill, DeAndre Hopkins, Keenan Allen. So we're talking some elite elite wide receivers and this guy is making people miss like it's his job most forced missed tackles you see here on the graphic um, from 2014 to 2017 0.27 um, per reception so almost like one out of four times per catch is making a guy miss a little bit more than that and he was number one in forced missed tackles in 2017 and 2018 so he kind of reminds me of a golden tate as you see here he was number two 
like a Golden Tate, Jarvis Landry, Julian Edelman kind of role as a player. Um, he's going to catch it. He's going to make a guy miss every once in a while. And he's going to get a ton of yak. That's pretty much what Golden Tate and uh, Julian Edelman and Jarvis Landry have been able to do consistently over the last few years. And those guys, they're just super safe on a week in, week, ba week, in week out basis uh, because they don't need to rely on the touchdowns. They can get some good receptions. Great for PPR scoring. And uh, really just give you some great production from, from that slot wide receiver, which we've seen over the past few years. We've seen slot or outside wide receivers go to the slot a little bit more because they are avoiding that number one uh, cornerback coverage for the most part. Because in some teams, probably mainly most teams, don't really shadow cover inside the slot. Um, so that's just a really big opportunity for guys to get better matchups, easier opportunities there as it's over the middle of the field. Some easier passes and more kind of easier work for below average quarterback play, which makes it a little bit easier on Albert Wilson. Despite the quarterback play, it doesn't need to rely on like a perfect ball down the um, sideline, something like that. Um, so really good stuff there. And now looking forward in 2019, after his really good season last year, like I mentioned, um, it's just going to be the same old thing, I think. He has some wide receivers around him um, who aren't really high kind of reception guys, like Kenny Stills, uh, Devontae Parker, Jakeem Grant, more kind of stretch the field, uh, gets you like maybe a few 20-yard catches. It's not really intermediate options. I think they're going to keep, um, they kind of spread the field for, um, uh, for um, well, I don't even know why, um, for Albert Wilson, I don't know why I was blanking on his name, um, but they're just going to spread the field for him. I think he's going to get a lot of spacing over the middle. Like when you see teams that aren't really able to stretch the field, the offense just seems very condensed, like there's not much space over the middle. Um, but when you see offenses that really succeed over the middle, they have that deep threat to go along with it for the most part. We did see we did see some struggles with the Patriots last year because they didn't really have that full deep threat. Uh, but when they got Josh Gordon in the offense, things started clicking like that. Like when they had Brandon Cooks the year before, um, Edelman was having a really good season. Um, with those kind of Brandon Cooks looks over the middle, even though actually he did get hurt. Um, but it just really opens up a lot for like Chris Hogan and stuff like that. When you have that deep threat, opens a lot of stuff over the middle because the safety has to pay attention to that. Um, so Kenny Stills, I think he's a pretty solid deep uh, threat receiver. Also Jakeem Grant. Devontae Parker hasn't been good, but he's still a guy you got to have some focus on because he is a solid talent, even though he hasn't been a good wide receiver. And like I mentioned before, though, some very positive game scripts. Uh, the Dolphins are projected for like four and a half wins. That's their win total. So obviously they're going to be down in a lot of games. Um, that means a lot more passing downs. They can't keep the they can't be running the ball when they're down to like 20 and half these games. And uh, it's just a really good situation for him. Like I said, and also I think he he matches up really well with both quarterbacks. I mean Josh Rosen, I think his biggest strength as a quarterback is over the middle intermediate stuff. Um, and we saw him work with a lot of slot wide receivers last year. A lot of his throws were to the slot guys like Larry Fitz, um, Christian Kirk. So he got a good amount of reps in with that. I think he'll click. Right off the bat with Albert Wilson, I'm not sure if Rosen's going to be starting the season. Obviously, we're not aware that not sure of that. I would guess it'd be Ryan Fitzpatrick early on, and that's not going to be an issue as well as Ryan Fitzpatrick actually has the highest rate of slot wide receiver targets since 20 or 2009. So both guys love to target the slot wide receivers, and both mesh really well with a player like Albert Wilson. Like I said, his fantasy pros consensus rank right now is wide receiver 68. Way too low to me. I'm not really sure why people are looking over this guy. His ADP is currently wide receiver 71. So like I said, undrafted in 10 team leagues and 12 team leagues. Uh, pretty silly mistake if you ask me. And also I wanted to mention that um, this is going to be an ex-Patriots wide receiver coach, uh, Chad, o Chad O'Shea, who's going to be the new offensive coordinator. Um, so this is a guy that has a lot of experience working with very good slot wide receivers like Julian Edelman. Edelman came into the Patriots system as a uh, quarterback out of college, and I developed him into probably being one of the best slot wide receivers of all time, I would say. Uh, Wes Welker, he did some work with him. Danny Amendola. So three of the kind of the prototypical slot wide, re slot wide receivers, which we've seen have great success in the NFL. So I think we'll be able to translate that over to a guy like Albert Wilson, who has all the talent in the world, like I mentioned, super fast um, and really good yards after catch at building. That's kind of the main thing with the Patriots offense. They give you a lot of yak opportunities. So hopefully you can design that same kind of thing with Albert Wilson. But obviously going into the air, there is some concerns with his hip injury. 
Sometimes that can limit a player, but it was uh, towards the middle of the season. I believe it was around October or November when the injury happened. He actually came out and came out and already said he's feeling 100. percent Thinks there's like no way he won't be ready for week one. So that's a great sign. Even if he does get off to a little bit slower of a start, uh, he won't be able to get for the most part. It sounds like a full training camp in um, to really get him ready for the season. And uh, this is my projection for him based on everything. Uh, they did last year and just based on the more opportunities like in this offense with all the guys around him not really garnering that many receptions I believe so I think he's going to be able to get seven receptions obviously this is if he does play all 16 games and I think he'll be good for 910 yards seven touchdowns I think they'll give him a few handoffs um, as he's a speedy guy like I mentioned kind of use him in that Cordero Patterson role that the Patriots did like a Brandon Cooks type where you just give him a little bit of a handoff make them do something with it as they don't have that many dynamic players on this offense for the Dolphins. And I think that will give them around two or to around 208 fantasy points. That's where it comes out to. And if he is able to do that, that is going to be wide receiver 20 last year. That's what those stats. So like we're talking about a guy that's going um, currently his ADP is wide receiver 71 and going undrafted and 10 team. 12 team leagues like I mentioned and I think he's going to have that good of a year so I think he's a must draft player for me uh, I would definitely be in a lookout in him he's pretty much a punt play anyways based on where he's going so I mean you can cut bait on him if he actually doesn't do well which I don't see happening I think he's a surefire guy if he can stay healthy in this offense it's way too many opportunities to go down go around I mean in a positive game script like that and we know with positive game scripts typically that's one of the best ways uh, to kind of consistently have production and targets. I mean, if you have targets week in, week out, you're going to be a solid fantasy player. So way too late for me. He's my must-draft favorite fantasy player right now based on his current value. Obviously, if he jumps all the way up to like wide receiver 30, um, then the value won't be that good as I'm currently uh, recording this like middle of July. So some things can change, but I doubt he'll be able to jump that much over the course of like a month heading into your draft. So definitely keep an eye out on him. 100% uh, say you should go and draft him. He's just way too good of value. So I hope you enjoyed the video though. Uh, leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel to get some more of this fantasy football uh, content heading into the year to get you ready for your drafts. Um, yeah, so we got some good information over here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, good luck in your drafts. And we'll see you back here again next time.